Kills and they're followed by Hello guys, Race Bay. Results and Patrick, Race 1, Race Results, Results and Play. Which was their first number 6 that time. Yeah. Never mind the stranger. Clawed in by Mr. Twist, who is now within three parts of a length. Less than two lengths back to El Champo, just in third from Glendar's Mala. Back marker of the leaders is Dylan's Day. Four lengths to Drumcliff Bay and then is Yeddor Shah. Five lengths to Billy Hyatt. And she's doing well, dropping out his Alka Jack over the fourth last flight. Never mind the stranger, yet to be headed. Close in second is Mr. Twist. Followed up the far side to the third last flight by Glendar's Mahler, sharing third with El Champo and then Dylan's Day. Both in touch, Jador Shah and Drumcliff Bay breaking clear of the remainder. Heading up to the final six furlongs with three flights to jump. Never mind the stranger now matched by Mr. Twist, a length off them. Glendar's Mahler and El Champo and then Dylan's Day, Jador Shah, and they're followed by Drumcliff Bay. Heading to the final five furlongs with two flights to jump. And the Adair Manor opportunity maiden, Mr. Twist, assumes command, takes over a one length lead over Glendar's Mahler, then El Champo, Dylan's Day ridden along, tying up rapidly the early front running. Never mind the stranger. Heading down to the final flight and Glendar's Mahler joins issue with Mr. Twist. Moving on forward in front of Dylan's Day and then El Champo who's followed by Drumcliff Bay. One flight left to jump Glendar's Mahler and Mark McDonough on the outside of Mr. Twist and nine more. Four lengths back to Dylan's Day and Keen Cullinan in third. The final flight Mr. Twist in the air with Glendar's Mahler. As they run the final turn for home, then Dylan's Day, El Champo, and Drumcliff Bay. As they straighten for the final furlong on the rail, it's Mr. Twist. On the outside, the nose bandit, Glendars Mahler, trying to gain on them in third is Dylan's Day, racing to the final hundred yards. And Mr. Twist is shaking off Glendars Mahler and Dylan's Day. Mr. Twist ends a losing run for nine more. And Philip Fenton, Dylan's Day, on the inside, might have snatched the second close home in the opening race with the third as they went by was Glendar's Mahler. They show by five lengths to Choice. Harelda Murray, Ben Bromley, disputing third, Dice of Dasher, Kieran Cannon on the outside of After the Drama, and Keen Cullinan, sort of then by Fox Farglow and Jody McGarvey, Tully Born next with all in Matra. Pushed along at the back of them, as Wing Duff, as they climbed to the third last flight. And the cap plant maiden hurdle over two and a quarter miles. And it continues to be Dulig Street, cutting out the running from the grey of Elder Murray. And third is Fox Far Glows, picked up a bit of ground. Then Dice of Dasher, after the drama, Tully Bourne and Orland Montmartre. And they're followed by Ring Duff. Third last flight, Dulig Street, low but emerged with an advantage of a couple of lengths. Fox Fire Glow joining Arelda Murray. They come up to the final five furlongs with two flights left to jump. So they make the bend to come across to the flight at the top of the track. This will be the second last. So making the descent with less than Three and a half furlongs to go. It's Dulig Street continuing in front, is trying to contain them from Fox Fard Low. Oh. Now shaken up in second. In third place is Arelda Murray. Closing is all in Montmartre on the outside. Then Tully Bourne and Dice of Dasher has fallen away. Two furlongs to race and one flight to jump. It's Dulig Street with trying to challenge Fox Fard Low. And between them is all in Montmartre was really laying it down to the two leaders as they swing in, then Tully Bourne and Arelda Murray, and it's all in Montmartre who hits the hill in front of on the outside Fox Fire Glow. Falling back on the inside is Dulig Street, and then Tully Bourne and Arelda Murray inside the final 150 yards, and it's all in Montmartre from Tully Bourne who's coming on the outside. It's going to be an upset either way. All in Montmartre from Tully Bourne, Fox Fire Glow. And Dulig Street, the early leader, faded back to four. First, Dead and Mary Meehan and Bella Bruce next, and they're followed by, no doubt about that. Ridden along is presenting Doyen, then Game and Glory, Frazzle Express. Four flights left to jump. In the lead by two legs, a diminished two legs is Cotty, 
followed by influential lady Roy Legal just holding on to the third from natural look who's improved and then knocking the gap and lady Esol pushed along as fruit blossomed and first dead and no doubt about that trying to improve from the rear is Mary Meehan and then Bella Bliss presenting Doyen and Game and Glory across the back straight they go with three flights to jump the lead still held by Cotty second place is influential lady Roy Legal just third from natural look was gaining ground on the outside of Nock Nagapa who hit that lady salt next followed by fruit blossom and Mary Meehan is presenting Doyen gets a reminder just over four furlongs to go they're heading for the second last it's Cotty by length and a half to influential lady Roy Legal still right with them in third the natural look and knock Nagapa driven into it as Mary Meehan two lengths to Lady Esalt and Fruit Blossom and no doubt about that and first dare to gap to presenting Doyen who's gone away from Game and Glory and Bella Bliss the first four are tightening up Cotty from Royal Eagle who's wrestled back the chase ahead of influential lady the natural look and knock Nagapa no doubt about that is closing in the light colors then Mary Meehan first dare and then Fruit Blossom and Lady E. Salt as they turn to the final flight. Cotty from Royal Eagle was now on terms. After them in third and closing is no doubt about that. A gap back to first there, but Cotty has gone again from the front. Hitting the hill in the final furlong. It is Cotty and Mike O'Connor lengthening away from Roy League at the top way. In third place, there's no doubt about that. And then Mary Meehan in first there. But it's Cotty making just about all in the Irish UBF Mayor's handicap. Quick fire double for Henry Zabrama. This one written by Mike O'Connor. Roy League in second, no doubt about that. Third and fourth was first. There. It's a double for Henry de Bromhead. Race is two and three. Cotty it is, the eight-year-old mayor who scores beating the top way Royal League. And will you walk with me? Yes. Oh, it's relegated to the position to third. Then walk on Shamey, typical Thomas, flight number four. After typical Thomas, in from the cold and by her side in Sir Roy. The way they go towards the point at which they started. Four flights left to jump. And the total down Patrick opportunity handicap. I don't get it. Yet to see any one of his rivals from Flag Fall. Dollar value is tipping away at the deficit. It is down now to five, six legs. And turn has moved on from Will You Walk With Me, Typical Thomas, Rock on Shamey by your side. He's trying to pick up ground ahead of a struggling in from the cold, and Cirque Royal has always been last. Climbing to the third last flight in the back straight. I don't get it. Pegged back by Dollar value. Then will you walk with me in typical Thomas, rock on Shamey next, and then by your side, written along as in from the cold, and then Cirque Royal, three to jump. I don't get it, and Michael O'Sullivan, reeled in by dollar value, written up on the outside by Aidan Kelly, who's now on terms. Then will you walk with me in Charlie O'Dwyer, a reminder for typical Thomas, Peter Smithers, as they reach the final five furlongs. Rock on Shamey is improving for Daniel King, and then by your side, and Ben Harvey. Two to jump. I don't get it. Has surrendered the lead to Dollar Value, who's driven on. Then will you walk with me on the inside? Rock on Shamey. Oh. Closing behind them is by your side. Coming down oh. the hill to the final three furlongs. Oh. One flight left to jump. And it is Dollar Value under pressure. Rock on Shamey makes a move on the inside of Will You Walk With Me. These three covered by two lengths. Hunted down by by your side. I don't get it. Is tied up. Coming past the two with one flight to jump, and it's Rock on Shamey being delivered in between. Dollar value, and will you walk with me? And then by your side, the final flight, and it's Rock on Shamey in front. And it's kicked clear on the turn end from will you walk with me? Then dollar value, and by your side, but Rock on Shamey is the one to catch. Straightening for the last furlong, it is Rock on Shamey out in front of will you walk with me? By your side, is staying on late. For a place at best, as it's rock on Shamey, kept up to work by Daniel King. They will score by five to six lengths. With by your side coming through for the second ahead of I don't get it, who rallied for the third. Well, on Shamey got first run on by your side, who maybe didn't find as much as uh, was anticipated, and I don't get it back in third spot. Rock and Shamey scoring for Ray Hackett and Daniel King on board for the first time. Five to one the price. Right, we move on next uh, to the ladies' day July. Sequoia Spirit, and then prioritize 
followed downhill by Monoxide and then Cars Lake and Starman remains the back marker. Four flights left to jump as they return to the point at which they set off. In race five, the Dunlop Holmes rated novice hurdle is Charlie Luciano leading Val the Man, Hans Gruber, tracked by Sequoia Spirit and then Zeta Bike Monoxide prioritize Cars Lake and Starman. On rising ground to the third last flight, less than seven furlongs to go. Charlie Luciano continues to show the way to Val de Man and Hans Gruber. And then Sequoia Spirit. Monoxide's picked up a bit of ground on the outside of Zeta Bite and then prioritized with the final couple. Three to jump. Cars Lake and Starman. They're stacking up with three flights left to jump. Charlie Luciano from a closing Val de Man. Mistaken third by Hans Gruber. Then Sequoia Spirit, ridden along now as Monoxide, starting to take closer orders, prioritize. Two left to jump, and it's Charlie Luciano with a very slim advantage over Val the Man, three lengths to Sequoia Spirit, who's closing in third. Dropping back is Hans Gruber, and then prioritize, who's followed by Zeta Bite and Starman, gone away from Cars Lake and Monoxide. Three furlongs to race and one flight to jump. Charlie Luciano, ridden along on the outside, Val the Man, poised as Sequoia Spirit, and the maroon and white, and then Hans Gruber followed to the last by prioritized then Zeta Bite and Starman trying to stay on from the back. At the final flight, Charlie Luciano with coming there, Sequoia Spirit. On the inside is Hans Gruber and then prioritize, running the home turn, and it's Charlie Luciano, followed in by Sequoia Spirit, who's trying to quicken up on the outside. After them in third is prioritize, 150 yards to go. Charlie Luciano from Sequoia Spirit, who's trying to go by but failing to do so. It's Charlie Luciano winning slugly enough from Sequoia Spirit and prioritize. Charlie Luciano has held off Sequoia Spirit. It didn't look like that in the run and prioritized has, has kept on for a third. I, I think the, the lead has exchanged hands race. as we jerry picks it up from Natural Breeze. Little Twinkle Star. Goody Girl the inside of Be My Hero and then Billable Grant nudged along. Little Flower next and then Globetrotter Civil and Copy of a Boredom and Jinx's Link. As they complete a circuit, Guest and Cressorella are both struggling in rear. Three left to jump. Natural Breeze has just won back the advantage from Wee Jerry in third is Little Twinkle Star, Billable Grand fourth and fifth is Be By Hero. Starting to creep into contention is Little Flower, then Goody Girl, three left to jump. Natural Breeze, James O'Sullivan from Wee Jerry alongside Neil Ryan. Sitting a length behind them in third is Billable Grand Gavin Broder, fourth mm -hmm. Little Twinkle Star, Nile Prendergast, mm -hmm. and then Be My Hero and Aidan Kelly. Five furlongs to mm -hmm. race, they've two to jump. Mm -hmm. And it's Wee Jerry matching strides with Natural Breeze. A length in front of Billable Grand. Poised is Be My Hero in the yellow and purple. White cap on the inside is Goody Girl, the little flower. Look out for Jinx's Link, who's coming from a long way back to join the leaders ahead of Copy of Boredom as they jump two out. Billable Grand was sloppy there. Lost ground to the leaders. Natural Breeze with Jinx's Link on the outside. A rapid mover to come up now and lead. And then Be My Hero, who's been wound up. We Jerry Fades and then Goody Girl and Little Flood and Billable Grand and Copy of Boredom and Globetrotter Civil weakening as Little Twinkle Start and then Guest and Cressorel. Two furlongs to race and one to jump. And it is Jinx's Link making the best of his way home over the last. Was stuttery into it with Natural Breeze. Fighting back on the inner. After them is Goody Girl and the Little Flower Be My Hero. Can't offer any more ahead of Globetrotter Civil and it's Jinx's Link, who's coming wide into the straight, is making a beeline across to the stands rail. Over on the far rail, Natural Breeze and Goody Girl is finishing off strongly in between horses. They're going towards the line. Goody Girl has got up from Jinx's Link, who might just have thrown it away in the Natural Breeze. Oh, well, 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 it's Connor Maxwell. Uh, on Derma McLaughlin's handicap debut and Goody Girl who's kept straightest truest Jinx's link uh, well, you have to feel hung across the track rather than by design maybe I'm wrong Natural Breeze back in third spot but Goody Girl seven in the last race making the bend to go along the side of the track and the concluding Irish EBF mare's bumper in a little while just leads on the descent, River Tara, followed by Airdrop, racing together. 
gone for T and Shimor with now a gap of a good four lengths back to the Gambler and the Nguyen. Almost at the completion of their first circuit. In a little while, out wide is River Tara on a tight rein. In between them is Air Drop and then Gone for T has picked up a position. And then Shimor is a newer relegates the Gambler to be the back marker. And that one starting to struggle now is ridden along. In a little while, returns to the back straight, half a length in front of River Tara, then Air Drop. Then she more and gone for T and Nua. And these six have left behind in a gambler. Inside the final six furlongs. Pressure's a little between in a little while. The blue and white on the inside of River Tara, tracked by airdrop. Then she more, gone for T and the Nua. Four and a half furlongs to go as they make the top bed, bringing them down into the dip. Then it's in a little while, matched by River Tara. With the trio contesting the third, Shimor, Gone for T, and Airdrop in between those two. These five covered by three lengths as they come down the hill. Trying to get through on the inside, Gone for T, but the door's been closed by in a little while. River Tara poised on the outside. Airdrop makes the move in between horses, and then Shimor, heading just outside the final quarter of a mile, and it's River Tara in the black cap. Airdrop trying to challenge, dropping back on the rail is in a little while. Wandering badly is Shimor and then gone for T, but it's River Tara into the straight. Moving on by two to three lengths from Air Drop, gone for T next, and then in a little while, hanging badly is Shimor. Is finishing up on the stands rail, but it's River Tara and Patrick Mullins putting the seal on the final race of the two day fixture here at Down Patrick. As the second bumper will also go to Patrick and Willie Mullins. River Tara beat Air Drop and gone for T. Well, there might have been opposition in the better.